Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, um, please do remember to subscribe. We had a little conversation with YouTube, but apparently we have less people who click subscribe than most channels, which is surprising. I think there's a button somewhere down there or there, I don't know. Um, do click on that and um, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, please, if you can sponsor us on Patreon, do go to Cracking the Cryptic on Patreon and do that. We're, we're very grateful for any um, participation of that sort as well. And there's a bit of extra content each month for those patrons. Now, today I'm going to have a look at an X sums puzzle. And this has been set by Tom Collier um, and it's been specifically recommended. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, X sums is a variant we haven't done much of and I know it's featuring at the UK um, Puzzle Association's Open Championship, which is coming up on in the first couple of weeks of March. So do go to the UK Puzzle Association's website. And if you're in the UK, why not register for it and turn up and meet some of us? You'll meet me, you'll meet Tom there. Um, I don't think Simon's going, but there'll be plenty of really experienced and um, friendly puzzlers there. Um, there's a Sudoku competition on the first day and then a puzzle competition over the two days. Um, it should be it should be good fun, frankly. I'm looking forward to it. And this coming weekend, there's um, a round of extra puzzles that have been set on this, in the same way as the tournament puzzles by David McNeil. Again, go to the UK Puzzle Association website. I might provide a link down below as well. Um, that's going to be interesting. I think you're going to get 90 minutes to try and solve up to eight puzzles that David set. And one of the constraints he's using is this X sums constraint, which I think is a very interesting constraint. The way the rule works is this. Every clue outside the grid shows the sum of the first X digits read from that direction in which X is the first number read from that direction. So for instance, this number here could be a two or a three. And the reason I say that is because if it's a two, the first two digits add up to eight. So they would be two, six. If it's a three, then it would be a three here and one and four in some arrangement here. This can't be a one because that would mean that the first one digit would add to eight and that's impossible. And it can't be anything higher because you can never have four different digits in the same row or more adding to eight. So that's the way the constraint works. The number outside the grid shows the sum of the first X digits from that direction in which X is the first of those digits. So if you get a one in this puzzle, you immediately know, like if this clue was a one, you'd immediately know there was a one there. If it was a three, you'd actually immediately know that there was a two and a one in the first two cells. But we don't get anything that easy in this puzzle. What we do get is lots of matching numbers across the grid. As you can see, four of the acrosses, and three of the down clues are mirrored at both ends. I suspect that's gonna give us some interesting things. Now let's start with this eight. As I said, it must begin with two or three. Both ends must begin with two or three. So we can, We've got a two, three pair in the row now. Now, as I also said, if it's a two, we get a six in the next cell, but if it's a three, it's either a one or a four in the next cell. So that must apply this side as well. I don't think we can go much beyond that in the original notation. So let's go down to the 17 row. Now to make up 17, three would work because you could then have 14 in the next two cells. Four is clearly possible. There are a number of ways of making up four in the first three cells. Five is possible too, um, in that you can have five cells including a five to make up 17. However, is five possible in this context? I don't think it is because if you had a five here and a four here, for instance, let's just do that first. Then the first five cells would add up to 17. 
the other four cells would add up to 17. Now the rule of 45 says that any full row or column has to add up to 45. So it couldn't be 5 and 4 because then they'd only be adding up to 34. Could it be 5 and 3? So these 5 adding up to 17 and these 3. Well that would be 34. There'd be another 11 and there's only one cell left to fit that in. That's impossible. So in fact 5 is not possible in these cells. They have to be 3 and 4. And in between the 3 and 4, which could be there and there, there's two cells that add up to 11, the remainder from 45, if you like. But those two cells could be there or they could be there. Mind you, they must be made up of either 2, 9 or 5, 6. So whichever way that goes, that must be right. Let's move on look at these other clues in the same sort of way. 30, can it be a 4? No, it can't because four digits making up 30 would have to be 9876, which don't include a four. So it could be five, six, or seven. Could it be seven though? Because out the end of it, if those seven were 30, these other two by the rule of 15 would have to add up to 15. Yeah, it could be six and nine. So seven does seem possible. Okay, let's have a look at the 28 as well. Um, four is possible now, is it? Four, nine, eight, seven, yes, four is possible. Five is clearly possible. Is six possible? Yes. Seven isn't, because if the first seven added up to 28, the last two would have to be nine and eight. And since we're saying that we, they can only be four, five, six, and seven, it can't actually be seven. It must be four, five, and six. The reason, again, is because if that was a 7, these two would have to be 9, 8, and that's not possible because this one can't be. It's a bit complicated, but it does work. Now, 27 in the down, in the column 2. Same sort of thing. Can it be 4? Yes, it could be 4, 6, 8, 9. It can be 5. Now, can it be 7 this time? No. Because if those were 7, the last two would have to add to 18 and both be 9, which isn't possible. So 4, 5 and 6 are the possibilities there. Just keep going. 11 could be 2. 2, 9 would be the combination. Could be 3. There must be several. Can't be 4, actually, because for 4 digits to add up to 11, I know this from Kokuro or from killer sudoku they would have to be one two three five that which doesn't include a four so these have to be two or three and in fact what that means for the one that is a three is that the other two digits have to be one and seven because two and six and three and five are both ruled out by that two three pair so the next digit in is either the nine if it's a two or one or seven and we're definitely going to have 2, 9, 3, 1, and 7 used in these six cells. Um, 21 has to be at least 4. Could it be as many as 6? Yes, if the first six cells were 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 in some order. That makes 21. Um, and that is possible, at, certainly, now. That'll either be right, I would think, or ruled out fairly early on. And finally, 16 both ends. Yeah, it's worth noting this 21 is not a both ends clue. That's the one that isn't. But 16 is. Again, a bit like the 11, there's something quite nice going on. It could be 3 or 4, but it can't be a 5 because the only way of doing 5 digits adding up to 16 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, which don't include 5. So that's a 3, 4 pair. So this is all we can get, I think, from the outside digits to start with or without going too deep at this point but but this three four that is very helpful because we know that this eight is either two six or three one four and how can it be three one four and leave anything to put in this cell it can't be this must be the two six we've got a digit in the grid hurrah and we can put a 3 over the other side and a 1-4 pair next to it, which stops this one being a 1, which is interesting, maybe. 
stops this one being a four because it's in this box one of these two is a four okay and that three works on this one so that becomes a four and that becomes a three now we know those three add up to 17 those four add up to 17 these two add up to 11 so it's a two five six nine pair in some way and this one okay these three add up to 17 so these two add up to 14 so they're either five nine or six eight if they were six eight it wouldn't be this way round because of that six <coughs> and yeah look look at this cell this cell is vital now i said earlier that two three seven nine and one have to be in those three cells in those sets of three cells so this one which can't be two three seven nine or one and can't be four must be five six or eight and look at that grouping that is a quintuple if you like of two five six eight nine or put another way where do one and seven go in this row well they must go here in these two cells wow okay and we've got a one in one of those two and a one in one of those two the one in box seven must be in one of those two cells um okay and in this row again let's do a bit more work on this where does the two go well it has to be in one of these two so they have to be a two nine pair making 11 and that means they are using the nine we can get rid of nine out of these these two have to add up to 14 to make this 17 glue work they have to be six and eight <laughs> so that's a five who ever thought we'd get this cell done reasonably early well i say reasonably early clearly the puzzle's taking a while but it's tough right so um excellent now this one seven pair means we can remove seven from that one we can remove six from there because of the six in the box as well um what else have we got this begins with three or four uh, it could be 13. ah interest okay this is three and four so a bit like here the two cells in the middle have to add up to 13 which is the remainder of 45 minus two lots of 16. so that could either be six and seven or these two being four and nine that's not possible no look it can't be these two that add up to 13 because they can't be four and nine because one of the four the four is gone in one of the top or bottom cells can't be six seven here because of that six can't be five eight because of that eight so it must be these two cells that add up to the middle 13. this must be the three because these three cells are going to add up to 16. Um, they must be five and eight so that's the four and down here we get one two and nine in some order and that fulfills the 16 clues they're done now now that three fixes this two three pair lovely that two goes with a nine to make 11. this one goes with either seven or one two so the other three in this column are four eight or six um, that four means there's no four here actually there's no four there either because of that four so we've got a five six pair there's no four there either ah maybe that five six pair is even more helpful um 11 cells so there's an overlap of two cells to make 28 plus 28 56 minus 45 to make 11 including this one so it's either those two which can't be seven four three eight five six they could be two nine might get a uniqueness issue there i know it could be resolved by the 21. they could be two nine or that and that could be seven four so that's four two or nine there 
How about this 30 row? Oh, look, we've got a bit. Oh, that can't be 7 anymore because of that 7. So that's 5. That makes that one 6. Now, the overlap here is those two, which must add up to 15. Can't be 6, 9 because of that 6. Must be 8, 7. We can get rid of 8 from those and put it in up here. That's a 1, 3 pair. Um, oh, that 6, 4 pair is resolved by this 6 straight away. 4 is in one of those two. Oh, look, 1 can't be in one of these two. That can't be two either. So it's four or nine. This could be two, four or nine. This could be one, two or nine. Oh, and maybe we can make up this 30 in five cells. Five, seven and eight is 20. This must be one and nine. So that's four, that's two. This is five, eight, nine as a group. This is two and three. Yeah, so we've used the 30 clues now. They're kind of done. Um, ah, and this 5-6 pair is resolved by this 5-6 pair. So the overlap here is these two cells. That makes 11. That must be 7 and 4. One there. That can't be a 1. Now, 28 in 5 cells here. 5, 7 and 4 makes 16. Another 12 here must be 3 and 9. Pretty sure that's right. Yep, that's not a 9, therefore. This one must be a 1. 5, 3, 9, 7, 4, 2, 8 in the column. That's a 2. Look how this works. It is so gorgeous. What a puzzle. It's so clever how these work opposite each other. Um, now we've done the 8 clue, we've done the 17 clue, we've done the 30 clue, we've done the 28. We have, we've finished the 11 and the 16. So we've just got this 21 and this 27 to work on. Now the 27 is an overlap of two cells because of 5 and 6. Either these two add up to 9 or these two. Well it can't be these two. Oh yes it could, 1 and 8. It can't be these two because none of those pairs add up to 9. So it is 1 and 8 there. That fixes that. We can get rid of 8s there. That 1, 8 or 1, 7 being resolved fixes the 4, 1 up there. Now, that 1, 8 is the overlap. So that's the 5. And this must be a 9 to make 27. Um, this must be the 6. Um, oh yes, 3 9's resolved there, 2 3 there, that's a 7. This 1 is resolved by that, so 1 can go in there. And the 21 clue, the last, the, the non-symmetrical one. <laughs> I said earlier, if this was a six, these six cells would have to be six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, this one obviously isn't. So it's not a six. It's clearly not a five. That's a four. So these four add up to 21. Um, this one's five or eight from the row. Four plus four, five, three, nine, that would work. This can't be 2, can it? Because then we'd need 15 in these two. Can't be 8, 7 or 9, 6. So that's a 9, 13. These add up to 8. Must be 5, 3. OK, and that fixes all the remaining um, doubles that we have, I think. In fact, that 9, 5 is clearly like that. And I think we've used up all the clues. The rest must be simple Sudoku. But what... I mean, what a fabulous puzzle. These ones have to be 3 and 5 because of the 3 and 5 here. So they must go like that. These are 8 and 7, resolved by that 7. 1 and 9 up here, resolved by that 9. 4 and 7 here, resolved by that 4. 1, 8, 6 to go in across here. So 1 there, yep, 6 and 8. 6, 2, 7, 6 in that order, 6, 2, 7, this is a 2, 
I love this puzzle. I mean, this, that is the most beautiful X sums I've ever seen. And X sums is nice. I like X sums, but that, that is clever. Um, I hope you got through that okay. Um, maybe you did better, but I'll be impressed if you did, because that's, I have a feeling that we saw everything we needed to see in about the order we needed to see it there. That is a really clever puzzle. Do, you know, do get involved um, if you're in the UK with the UK Puzzle Association. It'd be great to see you at the event in, uh, in a couple of weekends time. And do have a go at David McNeil's extra round as well. I'm sure there's going to be some interesting stuff in that too. Um, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye now.